Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and bringing out a bite-sized piece. Today, the question really has to be asked is, did we miss the boat on Solana? And should we actually be investing in Solana after a 343% increase in less than 30 days? So we'll take a look at what's going on as far as like where we are now, the Solana ecosystem. And uh, we're going to compare Solana to Ethereum in 2017 and the parabolic run it went through. Also, we'll take a look at uh, Solana CEO interview and some main points and dissect that. And lastly, we'll take a look at price action or price prediction. So before we jump into all of that and what's going on specifically in the market, I want to just uh, bring to light a quick article about Social Security and Medicare. And that's in the United States. If you're not in the United States, uh, we have Social Security, which you know gives us a little bit of money in our retirement. And Medicare is like our... Is our, um, our healthcare system for everybody 65 and older. No, we don't have universal healthcare, just the way it is. So what I want to say is congratulations to everybody who has invested in the crypto because there's going to be a lot more things like this coming on the pipe. And uh, I just would say to you, uh, just be cautious about what's going on. So real quick, uh, Social Security now projected run out of money sooner than expected. The Social Security Trust Fund most Americans rely on for their retirement will run out of money in 12 years. <laughs> One year sooner than expected. The financial outlook for Social Security and Medicare is also bleak as we're looking to round up Medicare as far as the hospital reimbursement in six years or less. So uh, that is what is going on. So just remember something. Uh, cryptocurrency was created out of the, the financial devastation of the 2008 uh, housing market crisis, Bitcoin specifically. So when we take a look at what is going on in the world around us and our governments, you can't trust anybody. The only one you can trust is you. So do your own research and do your due diligence and make sure that you're in the right place at the right time, which I think you are. All right. So that is that little snippet, a uh, little uh, drop of uh, scare, scaringness. But uh, here's some good news. First of all, uh, the market cap today is fantastic. 2.27 trillion touches 2.3 trillion, goes up and down and so on and so forth. Bitcoin price just went over 50,000 and just went down to 49.9. And the average uh, daily sentiment still 43, about you know, halfway there. But the Bitcoin daily sentiment is 70 out of 100. And this is, we are again using trade the chain. For some reason, I keep getting questions about this, about what I'm using. It's trade the chain. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you can go there for sentiment analysis on every cryptocurrency digital assets that are pretty much is out there, at least the top like four or 500 or something crazy like that. So check out Trade the Chain and that is what is going on. Let's just jump into today's topics, which is Solana, Solana and more Solana. So not so much it, as far as news, we know what's going on. Look, Cardano's about to hit their, um, their smart contracts. Uh, we see a lot of things with Ethereum moving forward. Yes, gas fees are high, Ethereum 2.0, hopefully right around the corner. And a lot of different things that are going on. And uh, El Salvador, I believe on the uh, 7th, is going to make uh, Bitcoin its legal tender. So a lot of great things going on. But what I want to focus on today was Solana because everything has just been going up. And the question I keep getting asked is, did I miss the boat? And uh, to answer that question, we have to do just uh, you know our due diligence. So first of all, where the heck are we? Well, Solana today just passed Dogecoin, which is crazy to me that it just passed Dogecoin. And I said here, Solana overtakes Dogecoin, even though Doge is bursting with utility, a stellar team of developers, and fantastic tokenomics. And of course, that is sarcasm. So uh, there is a huge disconnect in the market as far as like uh, what is actual utility and everything else. I know Dogecoin, all your holders are going to, you know, just rail on me. But I got to, I mean, when we go through this, this Solana, you cannot tell me that Dogecoin has more utility than Solana. So we'll, 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 just, we'll just go there. I'm happy for you. I mean, if you invest in Dogecoin, great, good job. I invested in Dogecoin a long time ago, made a good amount of money, uh, but that's not what we're here for. So that is where we are right now. And Solana is uh, looking around $143, which is pretty good considering like last year it was like 50 cents or something crazy like that. And then uh, me and Mike, the investor, we also uh, did a deep dive into this. We talked about Cardano and Solana, and I will link that in the description below. A lot of great information there, especially for Mike. He knows a lot about Solana and a lot what's going on. So I highly recommend that video if you want to go even deeper. Deeper. But to take a look at where are we now, this is where we're at. And everybody's really enthralled with what is going on as far as like Solana and transactions per second. You're going to hear that a lot, 
TPS, transactions per second. How many times can Solana actually transact in on the blockchain in a second and how fast is it as compared to something else, right? So like right now, if you go to Solana.com, it'll tell you live transactions per second is 1,662. That's pretty good because Bitcoin is like in the teens. I can't even tell you what it is, 7 to 14, something like that. Ethereum is like around 45. Cardano is uh, not that high whatsoever. And then, of course, in Solana, hey, it's uh, pretty high, which people will ask, well, how close is that to like a Visa? Why did you ask that question? So with, with Visa, they do about 1,700 transactions per second. So right away, I can tell you Solana is doing pretty much what Visa is. Now, there's a question about finality and how that all works. And, 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 and as it actually goes through, is there like a final settlement? It's not what we're talking about today. Just transaction second, pretty good. You got a lot of validator nodes, almost a thousand. So yeah, okay, we'll say it's a, a pretty good decentralized. And the, the next question that we're gonna take a look at is you know, how things are going is the ecosystem. So how does Solana stack up? Well, if you go back here, let me flip this through here. And let me blow this up so you can see what I see. So with the ecosystem itself, if you go to, again, solana.com forward slash ecosystem, I will link that in the description. Uh, FTX, pretty big exchange. Uh, Sam Beekman Freed, I believe his name is. Uh, I, I know I butcher his name. So, and of course, every time in the comments, how I butchered it. But uh, of course, uh, for Solana, FTX and Alameda Research chose Solana for speed. And we're going to talk about this real quick when the CEO of Solana talks about how he met up with the CEO of FTX and what they did. So there's one part to that, and then it gets a little crazier. Uh, USDC, the stablecoin from Circle, chose Solana for fast global settlement. 500 million or 50 million average issued daily, 837 million issued on Solana. Not too bad. And then also uh, Metaplex chose Solana to elevate creators. And Metaplex is for NFTs. And those seem to be doing pretty good lately if you've been following the NFT revolution, what's going on. But what I want, to, want you to notice is here, 34 cents average mint cost to mint an NFT on Metaplex, which is run on top of Solana, is 34 cents. Average auction cost is $3. So if you want to talk about getting out to the masses, that is huge. And then on top of that, you've also got soulc.io, which is an NFT marketplace, which just goes live today. And also you've got another one called solanart.io, which is also doing NFTs right now. So it's not like it's vaporware. And then to move forward, Audius, uh, that's a that, uh, uh, great one that just got picked up by TikTok, uh, chose Solana to scale. So that says something about that. And then, of course, back around we go. And that's just the top ones. But now, if you look at the projects that are being built on it, here's 332 more. So I'm not going to go through all these, but you're welcome to do that. I will link this in the description. You can check it out. But uh, it seems like Solana has no shortage of people or projects being built upon it, looking pretty good. So that is that piece. And then also, there was one more thing about how uh, Solana, 50,000 electric vehicles, charging stations in Europe to offer crypto payments. Uh, there's two payments have partnered up to roll out crypto across 50,000. It's uh, HIPS, H-I-P-S Payment Group Limited and Vority. The integration of crypto payments with charging stations will occur over the next three years, starting November 2021. And that's right around the corner. So like I've always said, I think Q4 is going to be fireworks for cryptocurrency. And this is their actual uh, payment terminal looks pretty cool right you got uh, let's see visa right here you got crypto apple pay start charging membership swish and so on and so forth and that's going to be for all electric vehicle payments and the protocol was built on ethereum and solana in may 2021 and plans to expand support to cardano in the future and that's before we go on i need to make mention of one thing and that is that we are talking about Solana and don't be confused that just because I'm talking about Solana in depth today, that that's all I'm investing in. Uh, I believe that people, well, I believe for myself, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a uh, financial advisor. This is just a financial opinion, not financial advice, but I really do believe that it's not a, a zero sum game. It's not a, a, a one token to rule them all Highlander nonsense. I think there's a lot of different space for this. And even if we go up to, I don't know, hundred, hundred fifty trillion dollar market cap, uh, even if, Ethereum is 50% of that. Uh, we've got somebody else like a Solana, like a Cardano or whatever else, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. I think uh, we are so early right now, it really doesn't matter. I think we should uh, stop the tribalism. It gets a little bit ridiculous. And uh, that's just my two cents. So uh, that is that little piece right there. And then 
the next part here, if we talk about Solana, what's going on, there was this, uh, <laughs> I belong to the uh, Patreon group over at uh, Invest Answers with James, and he put this out. Uh, this was uh, Raul, Raul Powell uh, over there at Real Vision. He said, Solana is the ETH of this cycle. He also said that Ethereum is the greatest trade of all time as far as like risk to reward ratio. And uh, I thought it was interesting because I'm like, huh, Solana is the ETH of this cycle. Well, it could be because back in, gosh, let me blow this up. Uh, back in the good old days, 2015, or sorry, 2017, you saw the price of uh, Ethereum at uh, 10 bucks, nine bucks, 965, and it went all the way in about a year uh, to $1,100. That's a pretty good deal. And then for uh, Solana, if you take a look at that, if we just go back just one year, it was about two bucks, right? And then we go all the way up to here to just a measly 128 or 143, whatever it is right now. So I think it's got a, a ways to go. And uh, we've seen a lot of things like that, but Solana could be the 2017 ETH because everybody compares it to it as far as an ETH killer. I don't think anything's like a real big ETH killer right now. I think Ethereum will go to 10K regardless because everybody says it's going to go and everybody believes in it. But uh, we'll see what happens when ETH 2.0 comes out. I think uh, there'll be a, a big dip after that, but uh, who knows? So um, I think Solana could be that 2017 ride. So on top of that, I wanted to share with you just the basics for, it was a uh, interview on Bloomberg called Odd Lots. And uh, they just had on um, the CEO of Solana, uh, Anatoly, Anatoly Yokovenko. I'm pretty sure I nailed that one. And they just had asked him a couple of questions that he answered. And it, I think it's important to understand where he's coming from as far as like who he is, who his team is, what they do and the utility. So uh, I can't blow this up because uh, it just looks a little bit uh, goofy. Someone's gonna read it to you right down here in introduction. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Banks aren't losing money to DeFi. DeFi user, user interface is tough for noobs. <laughs> Ethereum is tough for serious trading because of wait times and gas fees. And that's true. Uh, if you're an Ethereum maximalist, you gotta be true and tell me that the Ethereum gas fees are out of control. All right. so. It says here, this was the, the Anatoly. People kind of accept that blockchain is an inefficient database. The trade-off is called the trilemma. Uh, decentralization, performance, and security. That's the problem. You can't do everything uh, in blockchain because either you're going to have a decentralized factor or uh, you can centralize it and you can scale it and make it super secure, but it's not decentralized. Or you can make it super decentralized, but it's not really that secure and uh, you, you can't really scale too well. And that's why Ethereum is going for proof of work to proof of stake. So uh, they're saying... ETH and POW systems weren't designed to maximize bandwidth. And uh, this is what was interesting to me. Anatoly's background, the CEO. Most of the career was at Qualcomm from 2003 flip phones. I remember those. 2015 optimizing augmented reality on a supercomputer. He says uh, you can use multiple, you can use time division multiple access, how 2G cellular networks work. If you allow everyone to transmit on the cellular network at the same time, you get noise. This is similar to proof of work networks. So this is how he pr figured out this thing called proof of history instead of proof of work or proof of stake. This is a clock outside of consensus. It rotates the buttons of when any block producer and transmits a block. Do it about every 1.6 seconds. Makes consensus much more efficient and removes uh, many bottlenecks. And then to go on, no, not there. The goals of Solana. Let's see. And this was interesting. And this really gets down to just how early we really are. So listen to this. Anatoly says, the seed level uh, slide deck literally said blockchain at NASDAQ speed. And that was what he would give to his uh, investors just to talk about Solana. And he said, initially, they'd be going after monopolies like NASDAQ and CME. And at first, it was a dream, felt like a silly tagline on a slide deck, but now it feels real. I think there's a chance that financial execution trading can actually run on Solana in the next five to 10 years for the majority of things that are traded in the world. And that's really what it comes down to. So you see where his background is, you see what he's been doing, and he can even tell you that the CEO of Solana goes, look, this is a great project and I think we can do really well, but we're like five to 10 years away from what it is. So when you think like, ah, you know, I missed the opportunity and this isn't the right time and da da da, you're so early, you have no idea. And that's just really what it comes down to. So. Uh, moving on to the next piece here. Oh, I already did that one. Let's talk about price action. And that's the big thing. And, and be, before I, I talk about this, 
I'll just tell you what I'm doing personally. So there are a couple of things that I still dollar cost average every single day. And one of those is Solana. And I haven't stopped that yet. I don't think we're near where we should be. Uh, I did a price prediction video uh, not too long ago on June. And I gave a prediction that uh, I thought it would go to 200 bucks. This is when Solana was at $23. And I said, there's no way that it can't go at least back to its all-time high and not hit 200 bucks. And now, I mean, now we're at almost 150 and I think I lowballed it. But I mean, look, no one's gonna be mad at me for, for lowballing something. So I think we are exactly where we should be. So I still dollar cost average uh, Solana. I still dollar cost average uh, Cardano every couple of days, not every single day. And also uh, Avalanche and a couple other ones. I do not dollar cost average Bitcoin anymore. I think it's, for me, it's done. I've got a, I've got my positions. I've, Ethereum, I don't dollar cost average that anymore because I think for me right now it's done, and uh, that's for me. Now, if people want to be more safe and dollar cost average, that's fine. I just think that that for me, I've already got my safe positions. Now I do a little bit more riskier stuff, and off I go. So if we talk about this price of two hundred dollars, maybe I really am lowballing it. Let's take a look here. So there's the market cap calculator. So the coins, it's about one hundred forty-three. Its circulating supply is. Let's take a look. Make sure I'm correct. Circulating supply is 291 billion, no, million, 258,212. So we go back over here, 291, blah, blah, blah. And its market cap is 41, just 41 billion. So market cap around 41, yeah, exactly. So 41 billion. So not too shabby uh, in itself. So we're looking at Solana, 41 billion. Why couldn't, we're only at $2 trillion, $2.3 trillion right now. Why couldn't Solana, I mean, we're at 143 to hit 300. We just need 82 billion, which would put it right around Binance coin. Why couldn't we do that? Isn't there enough out there where people are speculating to go, this could really do it. And then that's the 300. So $200, I don't see, I think we're going to blow right past. I think I'm a little bit off, but that's where I see it could go. And uh, this to me, is a hundred to $150 trillion market cap asset class. And uh, that's where I see it. And the reason is, is because of this graphic, which I talk about all the time. Take a look at this. See this little square right here? It says silver, silver right here. That little square, that's a hundred billion dollars. It's a hundred billion, that's silver right there. Crypto is about this. This was, uh, this was made in May 27, 2020. Here's the military spending. I know that one up. Here's the budget deficit, that one way up. Coins, Fed's balance sheet, billionaires, gold. Uh, gold's at a $12 trillion market cap. Fortune 500, stock markets. You're looking at almost $100 trillion. It says 89.5 right here. But uh, yeah, $100 trillion for the, for the stock market. Couldn't we tokenize some of that? How about the money supply? How about the global debt? How about the real estate? Can we tokenize real estate? How about the wealth that's out there? And that's for everybody throughout the entire globe. And what about derivatives? And we're talking about... Uh, I mean, everything you could possibly think of, uh, and it, here's how far it goes. We're talking about one quadrillion, one quadrillion dollars. So if you think that two trillion, 2.4 or 5 trillion is the limit, look where we're at right here for the entire world's money and markets. And that is it. So look, uh, I still think Salon's got a long ways to go. We'll see how far it has to go. But again, um, only time will tell. But for everything I just talked about, you have to be aware that what goes up will come down and that there is only so much that it can actually be pumped into and it's not a straight up hockey stick. There's going to be volatility and peaks and valleys. So just be cautious. And that's it for today. So look, yeah, if you liked the video, found a little uh, value in it, uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.